All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our first live unboxing of our My Cyan Box Up in the Air. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. My name is Sierra, and I'm one of the educators here at the Michigan Science Center. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our first live Up in the Air. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. My name is Sierra, and I'm one of the educators here at the Michigan Science Center. Now, what we're going to be doing today is looking through the different activities that you should have all received inside of our boxes here at uh, one of your local libraries. So we distributed these boxes to Macomb County, Oakland County, and Wayne County. We actually drove around in our traveling science van and delivered the them to them personally. So hopefully, if you are able to get one of these boxes, you are actually able to see some of the activities we'll be talking about today. If you missed out on the boxes this time, that's okay. We're going to be doing another one of these in March, and that one's going to be all math themed. So by then, you guys should be able to get your hands on one of these and to be able to check out some of our activities. Okay, so our activity today, and actually all of my sci in a box, is brought to you by the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. And throughout our program, I'll be asking you guys questions. I know Alyssa, who was another one of our educators here, asked you guys to say hi in the chat. So you guys can go ahead, shoot a hi into the chat, tell us where you're coming from, and we'll be communicating through the chat for the majority of our program today. So let's go ahead and get started with our very first activity inside of our box. So we're going to be looking at, together, making a slingshot straw rocket. Now, before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about what up in the air even means, okay? So up in the air are all about different STEM-based activities that you can see, well, up in the air, of course. So I want you guys to name some things in the chat for me, okay? So what are some things that you can see when you go outside and look up at the sky? So what are some things that you can see when you're outside and you're looking up? I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to think about that. So what are some things you can see when you look up in the sky? I know, when I look up in the sky, something that I see a lot of are, are clouds. Sometimes I can see clouds. I can see planes. What else? Ooh, if it's dark outside, sometimes I can see stars, which are my favorite. I love stargazing. What else? What are some other things that we can see? I know that we have some people coming in, so I can see that Nyla and Amar are here. Nice to meet you guys. Hopefully I said your name all right. Also says Keegan's here. Hi, Keegan. Nice to meet you. If your comments are coming in a little bit slow, uh, that could just be because of our connection. So I might not be seeing uh, your comments as soon as you put them in. But hopefully you guys are able to come up with a lot of good ideas of different things that you can see up in the sky. Okay, so let's think about it. I said this first activity was called Slingshot Straw Rockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to bring up a display. So here's our Slingshot Straw Rockets. You received some instructions on Slingshot Straw Rockets uh, inside of your box. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these instructions and actually make one of these together. So if you have your box on hand, now is a good point to actually get out some of these activities. And if you don't have a box, that's okay. So the things they're gonna be working with are things that you might be able to find lying around the house or maybe at a local pharmacy or a store. And you'll be able to come back and watch this video later and be able to go along and make the slingshot rocket there. Okay, so I'm gonna get my materials set up. While I'm getting my materials set up, you guys can go ahead and grab anything that you might need to. Okay, so I'm gonna change my camera around here so you guys can get a better look at what I am working with. There we go, I'll straighten this out. So you should have gotten one of these foam pieces inside of your box. And we're gonna use this foam piece to build a part of our rocket. Now, what are some important things that you can think of that we need for our rocket? So. 
Okay, so when we're thinking about our rocket and the different things that we'll need inside of it, one of the things that I think about is like, let's think about a plane, right? So what's some of the things that we need inside of our plane? I know that I think that we're gonna need some wings. So we're gonna use our foam piece here in order to make some wings. Okay, so I'm gonna use this pencil, which also should be provided with you guys. A way to outline my wings. What shape should I make my wings, by the way? Should I, let's see, should I make like a boxy wing? Should I draw a big square? Have you guys ever seen like, uh, like airplanes with big boxes coming out the side of them, like a big rectangle? Or maybe I can just draw like a big circle wing. Has ever seen a big circle wing before? Do you think that's something we should be looking for? Now, when I think of the perfect shape for my rocket wings, usually when I'm seeing wings outside or when I'm looking up at airplanes, their wings are kind of made kind of like a triangle, right? Now, why might this be? Why do we think that the rocket's wings are shaped like a triangle? Ooh, rocket boosters. That's another good idea of something that we would need for our rocket, right? We would need them in order to get our rocket off the ground in the first place. It's a really great answer. Ooh, someone said fins. Yeah, like a fins. Exactly right. Ooh, a triangle. Exactly. We're going to create some fins that are shaped like a triangle. Now, the reason we're doing this is this shape is a lot more aerodynamic. Those are some great answers. So when we think of a rocket, right, it's not shaped like a, like a rectangle, right? It's pointed. And that's because it's trying to make its way through air resistance. So in order to glide smoothly inside of the sky, it needs to work its way through air resistance. So there's a lot of air outside in our atmosphere, right, that the, uh, our rocket has to work against. And by having a pointed towards the top of it and it going wider towards the base, that's a way it can carve its way through the air. So that's why we're going to go with triangle shapes for our fins. Now, you guys can make however many fins that you want because triangles are the strongest shape. Ooh, that's a really good answer. Triangles are very stable, aren't they? You guys can make as many fins as you want for your rocket, but I'm gonna go ahead and make three. Does three sound like a good number? Do you guys think I should make any more or any less? What do you guys think? Ooh, this one's a little bit bigger. While well, you guys think of that, I'm gonna try and make this a little bit smaller. Do you think three fins is good enough for our rocket? You know what, I'm feeling kind of fancy. What if I make four fins instead? Mainly because I like cutting out the phone shapes. I think they're very cute. I have purple one. There's a bunch of different colors that you guys have inside of your kit. And you'll be able to make some really interesting looking fins. All right, so now I have my four fins and I am going to tape it to my straw, okay? So in order to do that, I got a long piece of tape and I'm gonna tape both sides of it. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape right here. There we go. So there's tape touching both the fin and side of my straw rocket. So it can be as stable as possible. And you know what, I'm gonna tape the other side too, just to make sure that it's really, really on there. Okay, so that's one. Let's tape on our second one. And if you guys are making some of these along with me at home, or even if you make one of these later, you should definitely take a picture of it. I really want to see the different straw rockets that you guys design. So if you do take a picture of it, post it to social media, just make sure to tag us in them so I can see the different designs you guys come up with. Okay, so now I have two fins on either side. I'm going to try and make sure that these are balanced. So my next one, I'm gonna be pointing straight up just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna put the tape on here first. There we go. And now I'm going to attach it to my straw, just like this. Now I'll get another piece of tape. There we go. And now I have one last side to do. And I'm really liking the look of this one so far. I put my tape on it, attaching it to my straw rocket. 
And I'm gonna double up on the tape just to make sure it's very secure. Okay, perfect. So now I have all of my fins secured to my straw. Also within your kit, you should have gotten an eraser cap. And I'm gonna put this one right at the top of my straw rocket here. So we can have that nice pointed tip like we were talking about earlier. So it can carve through the air a little bit easier. The next thing I'm added to my straw rocket is a paper clip. So this part maybe is a little bit tricky, but all you wanna do is you wanna bend the paper clip so one side is sticking out, just like that. And then I'm going to tape the paper clip to my straw rocket. This is gonna be really important because this is what we're gonna use as a way to launch our straw rocket in the first place. It's always good to have an adult on hand to help you out with some of these. It can be a little bit difficult to do all of this on your own. I forgot to get an adult with me here today. So I'm doing this all on my own. So you guys have to bear with me as I make some taping mistakes. Okay, perfect. Well, okay, so someone is saying, can you please sew down? We are still taping our wings. Okay, thank you so much for bringing that up. Yeah, I can definitely slow down. So I won't go to the next step until you guys are here with me. So definitely text a comment, um, text in the chat when you guys are all caught up. So, so far what I've done is I've cut out my wings. I have taped them to my straw rocket. I have put the eraser head on the top and then I've attached my paper clip. So I'll let you guys work on that. I'm going to, to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see what uh, my straw rocket is looking like so far. Here we go. So this is all that I've been able to create so far. As you can see, I kind of went overboard with the wings. I have these four giant wings, but I do think it looks pretty cool like this. In fact, I'll zoom in so you guys can see them a little bit better. Let's see, here we go. All right, so here's my straw rocket so far. And I think I will name my rocket, let's call it the Purple Blaster Mach 5. I don't know what happens to Mach 1 through 4, probably nothing that's worth talking about, but now we're on our Mach 5 Purple Blaster. All right, so hopefully you guys are able to get a little bit more caught up with me at this point. So once again, you should have the fins taped to your straw rocket. You should have the purple eraser top or whatever color your eraser top is on the other side of your straw rocket, the side uh, across from your fins. And finally, you should have your paper clip pointing out. So I'm gonna leave this here for you guys to look at. I'm not actually going to start working on our next bit because even though we have our rocket finished at this point, we still need to make our slingshot, right? because it's our slingshot straw rockets and we're gonna need the slingshot to actually get it to blast off. So let me turn my camera back around so you guys can get a better look at this. And we're gonna put our slingshot together. This one isn't too difficult. All you need is a popsicle stick and the rubber band inside of our kit. My rubber band is also purple, just like uh, my wings. I have like a purple theme going on here, which I'm really interested in. And all I'm gonna do is I am going to tape this down. Oh, good. Okay, cool. So it looks like some of us are ready. That's fantastic. All right, so for this part, all you have to do, tape the rubber band to one side of your popsicle stick. And this is how we're going to launch our slingshot rocket. So I'll give you guys a chance to do that. So just tape your rubber band down to our slingshot rocket. Now, this is going to be the most exciting part because this is when we're actually going to launch our rocket. This part can be a little tricky. I've known that I have just sent my rocket just in random places before. So I'm gonna show you guys my tip in order to get this to launch perfectly every time. So what you do is you hold your rocket with one hand, you use the rubber band and you hook it onto that piece of a, paper clip that you stuck out. So this paper clip here, I hooked on my rubber band. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that a little bit easier. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Hook on the rubber band to my uh, paper clip here. Just like that. Excellent. So once you guys have managed to do that, 
you pull it back so it creates tension. There we go. I'm pulling it back. I'm filling it with what we call potential energy. Potential energy means that it has the potential to do something. And when I flick my popsicle stick, that's going to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. Oh my gosh, I would pull back so hard that it actually flung my rubber band off. Luckily, I planned for this. So I have another one right here. You guys thought you got me, but you didn't. So I'm going to hook on my paper clip. I'm going to aim it, going to pull back, and I'm going to flip my hand for it. I'm going to flick my hand for it. You guys ready? In three, two, one. There we go. And we launched our slingshot rocket. I know it went by so fast. Some of you guys might have missed it, but don't worry. I have another slingshot rocket. So once again, what we're doing is we are pulling back to create that tension, to create that potential energy, and we're going to release it into kinetic energy. I'm going to try to aim this right at the camera. There we go. I almost hit the camera, which actually probably would have been a really bad thing. So luckily, I did miss it. All right. So that's our first activity, creating slingshot rockets. Um, I'm sorry in advance for all of the people who might get hit by these rockets as they go flying around your room. Uh, the Michigan Science Center is, is not held responsible for any uh, slingshot related injuries, but still probably try not to injure people. So the scientist that we have featured for this activity is a Dr. Kelly Korak. And Dr. Korak is very, very cool. She actually graduated in this state, actually from the University of Michigan, uh, both her bachelor's and her PhD in space science. And nowadays, she is working on building parts for different probes in outer space. In fact, most recently, she worked on the Parker Solar Probe, which is the very first man-made uh, activity to, or I should say, man-made object to touch the sun. Isn't it so cool? She built something that got close enough to touch the outer layers of the sun. Right now, this probe is gathering information about the sun as we speak. It was only launched last month, December, I want to say 14th, but I'm not entirely certain on that date. But it was launched just last month, and we are continuing to gather data from it. So incredible work from Dr. Kelly Corrick. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next activity. So throughout the activities that we're working with today, we are going to be using all of the different components inside of your box, including the box itself. So our next activity, we are going to build a satellite using your box. Now it can be kind of difficult to cut up cardboard. So I pre-made the satellite this time. Before I show you the satellite, I have a little information about satellites to share with you first. What do you guys think of when you hear the word satellite? So some of you guys might not have heard this word before, but for some of you, maybe you have, maybe when talking about space science or even just talking about maybe your TV or television. But what do you think about when you hear the word satellite? Does anyone have any ideas? Have anyone ever heard that word before? While you guys are thinking, I can actually share an image that might help you guys. So what do we think of when we hear the word satellite? You might be thinking of an instrument really similar to what we see on the right here of this image. This is actually the first man-made satellite ever launched into outer space. It's called Sputnik, and it was launched by the USSR in 1957. So when we think of satellites, a lot of the times we think of a big metal object launched by humans that go in orbit around the Earth. But the actual definition of a satellite is an object in orbit around a planet. Ooh, so someone said the sun. That's a very, very good guess. So the sun is not technically a satellite because it's not in orbit around a planet. But there is another object that we can see up in the sky that is considered a satellite. So what's the largest object that orbits around the Earth? Can anyone tell me? Ooh, so someone said that a satellite is something that sends a signal to something. You're totally right. A lot of satellites do have that ability. 
but what's the largest satellite that orbits around the Earth? I'll give you a hint. You can usually see it at night. It's very big. It's very bright. Is anyone thinking about maybe the moon? So the moon is actually the largest uh, natural satellite in orbit around the Earth. So there's a lot of different flavors that satellites can come into, but some of them had that exact purpose to send signals to something else. So that was a really, really great comment. So I already made a satellite. I'm going to have you guys zoom in a little bit because I'm actually pretty proud of it. Now we gave you instructions on how to make a satellite inside of the box that you guys received. So they don't always have to look like the one that I made here, but this is just one way to make it. And if you follow the instructions we have given you, it'll come out kind of like this. Oh, good, you guys guessed it. You're right, the moon. Good job, you guys. All right, so I will go through detailed instructions about how to make this satellite. Um, don't worry about following along with me right now because I'm going to go through these instructions pretty fast and it can take a little while to make this satellite. I know this satellite took me probably like 20 minutes, so it can take some time, but I will tell you guys little quick tips as to how I make it because the instructions in the box can be sometimes a little bit difficult to follow. So once again, I'm going to switch my camera. I'm going to show you some of the pieces that I pre-made for my satellite. So the first thing I did was cut out six uh, cardboard squares from the box. Included within your box are different instructions, uh, different templates, I should say, to cut out these squares. So I started by cutting out my squares and then I taped them all together. So I taped them all together to create the base. So this blue box right here. Oh my gosh, look at the green screen. <laughs> it's affecting my blue box. That's so, so cute. Maybe I'll put it to the side for now because that could be a little distracting. Created six square pieces. I taped them together. And then I also cut out six pieces, <laughs> six pieces of cardboard paper as well. If I keep it at this angle, the green screen doesn't affect it quite as much. So, six pieces of these blue tiles. But before you tape them onto uh, the different cardboard pieces we cut off, two of those piles put away to the side, or two of those cardboard pieces, I should say, put away to the side and push these brads through them. So just like that, I pushed a bread through them and then I taped them to cardboard pieces on opposite side of our satellite. So I'll show you again what that looks like. So in practice, when you actually go around to making your box, it'll look something like this. So I have two of those breads sticking out on either side and that's what I attached my solar panels to. Now my solar panels I made by cutting out some more cardboard pieces from my box. So I cut out two uh, pieces, two long rectangle pieces that look like this. And then I cut out four pieces of construction paper and taped it to either side. So that's how I made my solar panels. In the case of a real satellite, solar panels are what actually take in uh, energy from the sun. That's what provides energy for our satellites to remain in orbit. Another piece you will cut out is kind of like a half circle here. And then in order to make the dish for your satellite, all you do is fold it up kind of like you're creating a bracelet and you tape it down just like this. So that'll give you your dish shape to put on top. And the final piece you'll need is to create your antenna. So I just cut out a small piece of construction paper and then I rolled it up to create my antenna. So just like that, that's how I made my antenna. Combining all of those different pieces together get you this final product, our satellite. So as you can see, it's very, very cute. I've decided to name it the USS Pikachu because it's yellow, just like Pikachu. And I really like Pikachu. That's kind of all the thought that went into it. So if you guys end up making a satellite like this at home, just like with your straw rockets, take a picture, tag us on it in social media because we'd love to see the different things that you guys put together. The scientist that we want to talk about for this one is Sydney Hamilton. So Sydney Hamilton actually currently works at Boeing. And what she does is 3D print different pieces for satellites. Satellites have a lot of different uses. 
like we said in the comments, they can help send signals to different things. They can be in charge of studying far off objects like stars or even the sun. They can be in charge of creating phone signals for us to be able to communicate with each other. So satellites have a lot of potential uses, which makes Sydney Hamilton's work so important. All right, so we have one last activity to go through together. We saved the best for last, or at least in my opinion, I think this experiment is so cool. What we're going to be doing is creating an Alka-Seltzer rocket. So you should have inside of your kit some Alka-Seltzer tablets. They look like this. And you should also have some film canisters. What we're gonna do with these film canisters and Alka-Seltzer tablets is create a reaction. This brings us to our um, third law of motion brought to us by actually Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that's important for getting things up in the air because it actually gives us the force necessary to propel different rockets off the ground. So as you can see in this picture here, we have an action, which is this case, the fuel generated, or I should say the fuel burned inside of our rocket, which is pushing out one way. And the reaction is propelling the rocket in another direction. So we're gonna practice some equal and opposite reactions right now with our Alka-Seltzer tablets. So this one, you're definitely gonna want an adult to do with you. So in order to get this to work, the first thing that you do is fill up a uh, film canister about halfway with water. Afterwards, you're going to break your Alka-Seltzer in half and drop it into the film canister. This part is very important because as soon as the Alka-Seltzer tablet hits the water, it's going to start a reaction. And you're gonna to wanna to put this lid on as quick as possible. So put the lid on, I sealed it nice and tight. And right now what's happening is that the Alka-Seltzer tablet is composed of an acid and a base. Now these acids and bases don't react when they're in their solid form, <laughs> but when they're reacted with water, they create carbon dioxide gas. That gas builds up more and more and more and more and more until the pressure is enough to shoot the rocket, or I should say in this case, the, cop, uh, the, the film canister cap right off of our canister. That went by super fast. We have a little bit of time left, so I'm gonna go through this very quickly one more time. So once again, filling it halfway filled with water, drop in your tablet, and let it sit. This one can be a little bit unpredictable, but it's creating that carbon dioxide gas. It is filling up its, con uh, its container because gas takes up a lot more room than a solid or a liquid. And eventually the gas has nowhere else to go, but up in the air. So that's what we're waiting for to happen here. Uh, this one definitely want to do with an adult supervisor because it can be so, I'm waiting for it to go off right now. Because you don't want to accidentally get injured by sticking your head right over the canister. It's always good to have another person there to make sure that you're practicing safe science. So in this case, it's building up the gas more and more and more until eventually the gas will have nowhere else to go. Now this one, we'll see if it'll go off. Sometimes if you don't get the seal on tight enough, that could be one of the reasons that your Alka-Seltzer rocket isn't working. I'm kind of worried now that this is just going to go off in the middle of when I'm talking. But let's see. Let's give it, let's give it a countdown, okay? Let's give it a countdown. We're gonna go five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this one might not pop. That's okay. Just gonna put it off to the side and take the lid off. There we go. So in that case, what happened is that it wasn't sealed on tight enough, so the water was leaking at the end, which I could saw once I investigated it. But you wanna be definitely be careful working with this at home. But this one is definitely a very cool reaction to see, and I recommend you guys all try and get at home with your very own Alka-Seltzer tablets. Now, the scientist featured for this one is Dr. Lonnie Johnson, and I think he is so, so cool. He's a rocket scientist who worked at NASA at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And while working at NASA, he was also an independent inventor, and he was working on making a um, type of energy source that relied on using water and air. He was working on this invention when he accidentally shot a stream of water all the way across the room. After he did that, he thought to himself, wow, that would make a super cool toy. So he decided to market his invention and eventually became known as the Super Soaker. 
So very, very cool guy. We have one of the most fun toys to play with in the summer to thank uh, Lonnie Johnson for. Now, this is the last activity, unfortunately, that I have to talk with you guys today. But don't worry, we're gonna be doing another one of these My Sign in the Box very, very soon. So in March, be on the lookout for our next one, which is all about math. Once again, My Sign in the Box is brought to you by the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. And hopefully you guys will have a lot of fun playing with your own box and building some different inventions. We'd love to see it. So if you take any pictures, post them to social media and tag us in it. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Bye guys.